Hi, I'm Chao Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about a case of spiral dissection of the RCA. So we have a 50-year-old woman who presented with chest pain. Uh, her past medical history is notable for extensive uh, stenting of the LED uh, due to a dissection. On cath, her uh, extensively stented LED is widely patent, and her uh, circumflex stent is patent as well. The initial LAO injection of the RCA showed only mild to moderate uh, osteal disease. Um, we see the RAO injection uh, of the RCA here. Now look at the angio carefully. You almost get a visceral reaction looking at it. Ouch. So what we see is a, a spiral dissection of the RCA from its osteum down uh, that was caught on cine. This is not something that you want to see. Uh, you see several striking features. Um, the ostium uh, suddenly gets bigger uh, from the contrast now filling the false lumen. Uh, you see the white line uh, that spirals down the blood vessel. Uh, that's the, uh, the section flap uh, traveling down uh, the vessel uh, with uh, the contrast injection. So the first thing you do is you want to stop the contrast injection. Contrast injection can uh, continue to enlarge uh, the false lumen. So avoid injection if you can, and if you must inject uh, to see where your wire is going, it is safer uh, to disengage your catheter and get uh, non-selective shots, although obviously the image quality is going to suffer. So uh, now, what are we going to do uh, with uh, this spiral dissection? Well, um, this is staying the obvious, but uh, you uh, obviously have to get a wire into the true lumen. Uh, this is a much easier said than done. Uh, part of the reason is that it can be very hard to tell uh, for certain whether your wire is in the true lumen or in the false lumen. Uh, but there are some uh, rules of thumb. Uh, if your wire doesn't advance easily, if you have to push hard, then uh, you are in the false lumen. If your wire knuckles, uh, in other words, if it uh, curls up, uh, then you're in the false lumen. If your wire does not take any of the side branches, then you are in the false lumen. If your wire appears to be spiraling around the outside of the vessel, then that also means you're the false lumen. If you get significant ectopy, uh, then your wire might have actually exited uh, the vessel architecture, pull it back. Now, if your wire advances easily, if your wire takes all of the side branches, uh, then you are probably in the true lumen. However, remember, you can also dissect down side branches to just so just because you're going down side branches, it is not a slam dunk. Uh, the wire needs to go freely and easily uh, down the side branches. Ideally, if there are uh, pre-existing uh, collaterals, uh, you can get contralateral access to do contralateral injections as you would do for CTO interventions uh, to establish whether you are in a true lumen or not. IVIS can help, uh, but the IVIS catheter can itself uh, enlarge the, uh, the section plane. Now, uh, many of us uh, do a distal microcatheter uh, contrast injection. Now, this is actually very, uh, fairly risky because if it turns out that you're in the false lumen, then your contrast injection has just uh, dramatically enlarged the dissection. But uh, what if, try as you might, uh, you're not able to get into the true lumen? Well, um, the most common reason for this is a compression of the true lumen by the false lumen. Because as the blood is uh, an injected contrast enters the false lumen, uh, the false lumen gets larger and larger and begins compressing the true lumen, making it extremely difficult to wire. The uh, subsequent formation of a intramural hematoma in the false lumen uh, does not make things any easier. So there are a few techniques to deal with this, uh, but the uh, fastest and most easily accessible technique is probably the, par uh, the uh, parallel wire and straw technique. Uh, in this technique, uh, if you find yourself uh, with your wire in the false lumen, uh, you, you just leave it there. And in the second step, you advance a microcatheter over this wire uh, into the false lumen. Once the microcatheter is in the false lumen, you then aspirate back on the microcatheter with a syringe. The idea here is to use your microcatheter as a straw uh, to evacuate the blood and intramural hematoma from the dissection plane. Because once the uh, blood and in intramural hematoma is, is evacuated, the false lumen will shrink and collapse, uh, potentially opening up the true lumen again uh, for your wire. 
So this is the straw part of the technique. And in CTOPCI, the straw technique is uh, very commonly used to assist uh, true lumen reentry uh, in uh, anti-grade uh, dissection reentry cases. Finally, pass your second wire, the parallel wire, into the true lumen while keeping negative suction on your microcatheter straw that is in the false lumen. You'll need a second set of hands to do this, like your fellow or your scrub tech. Now, here's a tip. Uh, I actually suggest uh, using an over-the-wire balloon uh, to pass your second wire. This is because with constant inflow of blood, um, negative suction on the microcatheter straw that's in the false lumen may not be sufficient uh, to keep the false lumen down. So to prevent this, uh, you can inflate your over-the-wire balloon gently, uh, proximal to the dissection, and occlude the vessel. This will prevent uh, further blood inflow into the false lumen and will maximize the ability of your microcatheter straw to keep the false lumen down and so therefore to keep the true lumen open and for your wire to pass. The drawback obviously is that uh, you'll be ischemic unless you've got collaterals and unless you can do contralateral injections, uh, you also won't be able to tell uh, where your second wire is going very well. Um, if the uh, parallel wire and straw techniques uh, don't work, uh, there are a number of CTO techniques uh, that can be useful. Uh, you can try the stingray balloon with a double blind stick and swap uh, to get back into true lumen. Uh, this is usually done in combination with the straw technique. Uh, you can try to go retrograde and do reverse cart. And um, there are uh, quite a few excellent references, I'm sure YouTube videos that describe these techniques in great detail. Uh, but unfortunately, if you are at a community hospital, you might be stuck. Uh, stingray balloons are usually not available uh, to interventional cardiologists at community hospitals, and retrograde uh, interventions are not recommended at hospitals without um, cardiac surgery backup. Okay, so uh, back to our patient. Um, so miraculously, a BMW wire passed fairly uh, easily uh, to the distal RCA. Uh, the wire advanced easily, it did not spiral, it took side branches very easily. So although there were no uh, collaterals for contralateral injections, we were fairly certain uh, that we were in the true lumen. Now, as we discussed, uh, contralateral injection in these cases should be avoided as much as possible, uh, but we thought that it was necessary here to confirm our wire position. So here we see the spiral in the section. Uh, but also confirmed that our wire was uh, is was indeed in the true lumen. Okay, so now that you have your wire in the true lumen, all you have to do is stent it up, right? You are pretty much home free. Well, almost, uh, but you still have to be very careful. Uh, stenting uh, dissected vessels is precarious, and is not, it is not the same as stenting non-dissected vessels. There is a high rate of both early and late complications. Um, angioplasty and stenting can cause longitudinal extension of the hematoma and propagate the dissection. So appropriately sizing the stent is important, but it is difficult uh, because of the intramural hematoma. So in many cases, initially well-opposed stents can become malopposed later on as the hematoma uh, resorbs. So a few pointers on PCI in a dissected vessel. Your first objective is uh, to not make the problem worse. You do not want to cause the hematoma to propagate and worsen the dissection. So predilation should be minimized, and if done, should be kept at low pressure. You don't want to oversize the stent. A large stent will push the hematoma out and um, extend the dissection. And dissected vessel diameters, unfortunately, can be hard to assess. Uh, so, and, and you want to avoid uh, repeated contrast injections. So sometimes using IVIS uh, can help with uh, stent sizing. Size the stent as best you can to the size of the vessel. And this actually is one of the few situations where I would actually suggest to err on the side of a smaller stent if you must. Next, uh, choose longer stents far longer uh, than you would for normal PCI, and significantly longer than the dissected segment. You want the end of your stent to be in healthy tissue well beyond the end of the dissection. Why? This will help with pinning in the dissection and prevent it from propagating while you're expanding the stent. In fact, uh, one might consider placing short stents preemptively in normal segments, proximal and distal uh, to the dissection before you start stenting the dissected segment. These preemptive stents act as barriers to block the hematoma from propagating while you're working on the stented segment. 
Um, finally, post dilation in the stented, uh, in the dissected segment should be minimized, and if done, uh, kept at low pressure. And remember, your aim in these cases is not angiographic perfection. It is simply to restore flow uh, in your otherwise unstable patient. Perfect is the enemy of good, especially in PCI of dissected vessels. So here we are pistoling our first stent. Uh, we're making sure that it's ending in healthy tissue uh, well beyond the end of the dissection. Uh, preemptively stenting the ostium first to prevent back propagation of the dissection was considered, but in this case, hanging an osteo stent out in the aorta may hamper uh, delivery of subsequent stents, so we uh, uh, opted not to do that. Next, uh, two other stents went in uh, to completely tack up the dissection and followed by gentle IVUS guided uh, post dilation. And here's the final angiographic result, which is quite nice. Uh, there is no residual dissection, and there was uh, TIMI 3 flow throughout. Uh, the patient went home the next day with a prolonged uh, dual antiplatelet therapy recommended. And given her past history of LED dissection, an evaluation for uh, connective tissue disease uh, was also recommended. Okay, so uh, take home messages. Um, once you're faced uh, with a spiral dissection, uh, the first thing to do is to minimize contrast injections. You don't want your contrast injections to extend the dissection plane. Um, if you need to take shots, um, it is often better to disengage and take non-selective shots. Uh, wiring dissected vessels is extremely challenging, and we discussed the parallel wiring and straw technique, as well as outline some CTO techniques uh, which may help. And remember that stenting dissected vessels, it is not the same as stenting normal vessels. Uh, you need to be less aggressive with your pre-dilation and with your post-dilation. You wanna consider pinning in the dissection with stents proximal and distal in healthy tissue. And you'll need to use uh, much longer stents than you normally would. And uh, make sure you don't oversize the stents. Thank you for watching.